No, I'm more of a drunk uncle. I think it's uh... <laughs> He's a dunkle. I'm a dunkle. Welcome to the after after party. Hi. Um, I gotta say, full disclosure, my favorite genre thematic episode was definitely Hannah's. It was so beautiful. Thank you. How enjoyable was it to step into like a Wes Anderson inspired episode? It was really intimidating at first because I have that genre on such a pedestal, um, but getting to do it was really fun and, you know, I didn't want it to be too stilted and not have humanity, but kind of trusted the filmmaking and did my best. She's wonderful oh, in it. Oh, thank you. You know, one of the things I loved most about this series is that, yes, of course, we get to see, you know, the events go down through a different character's perspective. But then creatively, it's so beautiful to see that every episode is inspired by a specific movie genre. So if your life were to be told through a specific movie genre, which would you pick? For me, I definitely love Hannah's episode, the Wes Anderson vibe. Mm -hmm. But for the two of you, what would you pick? It would be a cheap soap opera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> On VHS, <laughs> where uh, constantly uh, horrible things are happening from episode to episode. I think Lord of the Rings for me. I think like Middle yeah. Earth. I'm, everyone calls me mid, which I heard from young kids. That means you're great. So oh. uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think I'm mid. I think for myself, I could see it through the genre of like a Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Just an idiot kind of making his way through <laughs> life, you know, lucking his way through things. <laughs> uh, I would, I, you know, I'm going to go for a spaghetti western. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah, I just love horses and... <laughs> I, I, you know, I watched, grew up watching a lot of John Wayne stuff, and I, I've never saw my face in, in that world, so put me in it. I don't know. Maybe a Guy Ritchie film. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Just a lot of swearing and Cockney accents. I feel like that would maybe be quite an interesting way to sort of tell my story. Uh, I think mine would be like a Tarantino broken chronology thing where everybody talks really interesting in interesting ways and you chop the story up so it doesn't get too boring. I keep saying slasher film. <laughs> Just because I think it would yes. be like, especially something like After Party where it's like not meant to be like actually scary or whatever. I think just having like a really, like almost like a Pulp Fiction-y kind of like, like slasher, like Kill Bill-esque, like Ooh. gushing blood. Ooh. And like, I think that would be so fun. Or like maybe like sci-fi. Um, kind of like a near future sci-fi. Mm. Oh no, I, no, okay combined slasher sci-fi what's that movie where that one chick has like a like a machine gun leg but i watched season one and i was like how are they gonna up the ante for season two and the creative team did not disappoint what was your favorite part about stepping into this world but also getting to act alongside what has got to be like one of the best comedic ensembles i've ever seen one thing I really liked was when we had our like early, you have your like HR seminars early on before the show even starts. And usually those are very um, important, but also quite dry, like bone dry. They're just going through the various corporate policies. And Tiffany Hanish, who I'd never met before, was so unbelievably funny during these like, she was like really <laughs> trolling the Apple lawyers in these ways that were very, very funny. Um, and I thought that was, I was like, ooh, this is going to be fun. Like if even the most kind of like bone dry corporate hoop jumping becomes like uh, surprising and, and, and funny, then it bodes well. Both seasons, we really inherited families. I, you know, Ken and Vivian, Poppy and I call them mom and dad still. Uh, Poppy has become a real sister to me in, 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 IRL. Um, I am an older sister and uh, I'm very close with my younger sister. So, you know, uh, it's already a, a, a natural uh, relationship and dynamic that I have built in my, into yeah. my life. And so it's very easy to plug into that. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's fun to also leave this season being like, man, I got 
another pair of parents, <laughs> you know, who are really both Ken and Vivian are very uh, nurturing in different ways. I very much needed a comedy at this point in my life. It just so happens that it was a really good one that I could kind of uh, trust fall into. I saw the actors that were attached and I enjoyed season one and I'm a fan of Lord and Miller. So yeah, that was a nice departure and it's more in the vein of like a Cobra Kai or some of the other stuff I do. It's so silly. Like it was so silly. Um, Jack also. No departure for me. I exclusively play English assholes and it was great to find another part like this that is just well within my wheelhouse. And it may not be a departure, but his his performance is so good, this may be Jack Whitehall's arrival. <laughs> See what I did there? I, mean, I feel like that's a little bit of shade to like all of your other work, but I mean, it's nice that you finally arrived to the party. Yes, exactly. And John, I mean, I just, I loved the brotherly dynamic between the two yeah. of you in this. It was rough at times. It was rough at times. Um, but how would you describe yourself in real life? Like, would you describe yourself as a Funkle who's incredibly talented at dancing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, none of those <laughs> words apply to me. Uh, I would like to think that I'm not like Ulysses, um, uh, who is a little, <laughs> a little irritating, uh, if I'm, if I'm to be honest, standing from the outside. But it made for great comedy. I think you're yeah, a fuzzy. I can imagine a fun he... cousin. A fun cousin. Yeah. A fuzz... <laughs> Fatty, fat, a fun daddy. <laughs> you're a fatty and a fuzzin all in one. I'm a fast hole. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, are you also a fast hole? I'm just wondering. No, I'm more of a drunk uncle. I think it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's a dunkle. <laughs> I'm a dunkle. Um, I, I, to me, I, I'm like my kids, uh, and, we, and we both have kids, but we're, I, I'm definitely, definitely a goofy, you know, a goofy. Of course, I have my serious size, but yeah, they're definitely will we'll, we'll veer take a left at goofball and take a right at silly. Weddings are such a good time to get up and to dance. So what's like that track that when you hear, you can't help but get up and dance? For me, it's definitely Whitney Houston's Higher Love. Oh, Ooh. really good. I was actually just at a wedding last weekend. Um, and what, it do, it, honestly, it does not take very much for me to dance. Like just I, <laughs> any kind of beat, it could be like Baby Shark and I would be kind of like, you know, mm. like moving, grinding, whatever. Um, lately, I would say my summer track. I'm really into Muna right now. Aww. I love it's Pride Month. I'm really just like feeling it all. So yeah, but I would shake my butt to whatever. I would say um, I have a couple songs, but I'll say I'll choose Bruno Mars with. Uh, the I don't know what the song is called. Jumped on a grenade. Uh, don't believe me, just watch. Oh yeah. yeah. Do -do 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 -do. Like that. When that song, I could be in the middle of a funeral or a wake, and if somebody plays that song, I'm just gonna start break dancing and mm. and pulling my clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> Earth, wind, and fire, September. Oh, good answer. Gotta dance or boogie fever. You got the boogie oh, feet yes. up. Got the boogie down and get on down. Keep going. But I think Earth, Wind, and Fire, September. That I think That's if somebody really good. doesn't dance to that, there's something wrong with them. I don't think I've heard this song in at a wedding, but it needs to be there. Do you know the da dip? I think it's called da dip. D a d i p. Um, to put your hand upon your hip. When I dip, you dip, you dip. I put yeah. my hand upon your hip. But that's not Macarena. No, but that's fun too. I love Cameo's Word Up. It's such a deep cut. It's such a deep cut. I also like, like when we go to weddings and reunions, you know, anything ABBA is great. You know, just like my wife and I will just like, yeah, just love doing it. Just, you, just the standard stuff, you know, I think. Girls just want to have fun, Cindy Lauper. We did do, we did <laughs> yeah. do girls want to have fun. We played that a lot. We would have this runner, even but when we invite the whole cast to set, I think I have it on my phone where Lily, yeah, yeah. like everyone's just like, we're literally playing girls want to have fun. And I think Sam Richardson would, would actually sing as a cat. Remember girl, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, like the whole, it was a whole thing with girls want to have fun. That was amazing. 
like the video, then hit the button, or better yet, drop us a comment, then check out our latest videos here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button here for more celebrity interviews and entertainment news.